We lived in a world where capital was cheap under Basel I. Counterparties were viewed the same. If you were a corporate, it didn't matter if you were a AAA or a uh, single B or non-rated. If you were a bank, you were, you were capitalized at 20%. Collateral wasn't an issue. Uh, and, and for the most part, trade bankers really didn't have to think about capital on their balance sheet or the cost of capital to their business. Along came Basel II, and, and with Basel II, the, the, really the desire to say, look, if banks have historical data, if banks can do the proper risk modeling and data modeling and mark to market, then they ultimately can have lower capital. But for the trade business, what happened was, because it, it's, it's such a high intensity of non-investment grade clients, it actually became very, very punitive to the, uh, to the trade business. All of us, I think, would agree here that by and large, commercial trade has been a fairly low loss, lower risk proposition for most of our institutions. And therefore, the allocation of capital and the willingness to engage in that kind of activity has been viewed as a fairly smart use of the balance sheet or the off-balance sheet capabilities of, of the individual uh, firms. Most people would say Basel I wasn't exactly right. Um, Basel II got it uh, wrong, uh, even more wrong than Basel I, and now we're jumping off the cliff. There was concerns about trade, concerns about procyclicality, <clears throat> and some of those came to be effectively, which we'll talk about later. And now we come into sort of another round of changes with Basel III coming in, and there are some you know, very sensible and very well-intended changes coming that look at leverage and trying to avoid things being put off balance sheet to increase leverage, that look at liquidity, both short and long-term liquidity, and you know, none of this you can fault. I think the problem here is that when it comes to regulatory change, we're all talking about what we don't want banks to do, and we're not talking about what we do want to have banks to do. G given what has happened with respect to the complexity, increasing complexity of the regulation uh, for trade on the Basel II and Basel III now, is to ask uh, whether the, uh, the banking community can eventually get their act together and, and show uh, to the regulators that trade finance is a safe proposition. The sort of instruments we're talking about, it's not a bank that chooses to put them off balance sheet, it's the underlying commerce of someone buying from somebody and paying for it later that causes that item to exist. So a bank can't use this to create leverage, it's simply reflective of the underlying commerce. It's going to become, I think, apparent fairly quickly to many of our corporate clients that you know, the willingness perhaps on a dollar for dollar basis, if I may, to say, okay, are we prepared to uh, support this client on the basis of a shorter term trade instrument, or would we look at this now as we might as well make a one year working capital loan? Right. Because from a regulatory perspective, they're going to be accounted for in the same, same manner. I, I still think that you know risk profiles and maturity profiles in, in the company are going to dictate uh, a mix of, of uh, implementation in terms of how you use those instruments. When you look at uh, uh, Basel III or what the proposals that are out there now, um, because the, they, they move so dramatically, um, if certain countries decide they're not going to implement it, have we then created some um, what I would call regulatory arbitrage opportunity um, around the world where um, you know I don't have to have 100% capital if I'm in country X, but I do if I'm in country Y. A tremendous improvement has taken place in the market and that basically liquidity has returned to the grand roots of international trade. It's going to vary by balance sheet, but it's suffice to say I'd, I think any bank that's got a reasonable portfolio could expect at least a 10% reduction in the risk weighted assets that, that are in that pot by going from the one year downwards. Now that might not sound like a lot, but it has two effects. One is that you know, for every 10 billion that you have of risk weighted assets, that's a billion freed up. Yeah. yeah? And secondly, when it comes to, because we're not talking absolute here, because at no point are we saying that Basel is bad for trade per se, or that Basel has in any way singled out trade, or has done something bad to trade. The point is it's not favoring trade. There is an increasing dislocation between regulatory capital and economic capital mm -hmm. that we all look at in terms of how we in turn and how we internally decide to move things around, how we would want to deploy our capital, where we'd want to support a client. It's not all gloom and doom. Um, you know, there, there is uh, perhaps some light <clears throat> at the end of the tunnel. I, I think one of, the, one of the positive things that has come out of this is for the first time ever, um, to a great extent, the industry's come together and said, we have to do something about this issue.
um, with the support of organizations like the WTO and a number of other people. Um, you, you've heard reference here to the ICC registry. If you haven't seen that data, it's very important. For the first time, the industry has empirical data to sit down and talk to the regulators. World trade will continue to outpace GDP in the future at, if we look at the historical perspective. And if this is the case, in a retrenching or at least in a, in a global uh, banking market that does not grow, or does not lend more than a nominal GDP, then that means that within the balance sheets um, uh, of banks, uh, there might be more demand for trade uh, services than for other services. There have been studies to show that, you know, that, that it potentially could take $300 billion worth of uh, trade flow off the table. You've got to educate the pension funds and the insurance companies. You know, likewise, we've got to educate the corporate customers uh, about the implications of, of this as well.